You're on, guys. Okay, you're recording. Yeah. So, Thomas, um, thanks for having us out to Berlin, mate. Eh? Yeah, of course. In your mega cool flat. I know. Uh, the Dominic Holland Envision show has never looked as cool as this. I know. You should build this <laughs> in the studio. Can I, I take this back to London? That speaker. Is that a speaker? Is worth like 50,000 euros or something like that. Is it? And we were told when we were moved when we moved in, don't, don't use, use the speaker. Did you use it? No, not once. That, I tried to. Is that, look how confusing that remote is. Look at that. As someone who can't actually turn my TV on at home, there's no way you could figure this. I out. would look at that and think, not interested. He has some amazing records though. It's pretty incredible. Do you know who the guy is who lived? Who is? Who actually owns his place? Yeah, he came over one day. Did uh, he? And I was like, oh, hi. And he <laughs> goes, can I come in? I was like, I suppose <laughs> so. Is. And then he goes, can I make a coffee? I said, like, yeah, it's, it's your coffee machine. And he came in, he made a coffee. And then he, he was, this was like really, but he really. Not, he must have known y you were the. Yeah, he knew who I was. And he knew that I was renting his house. Right. And then he told me, he said, the one thing that I ask is that you don't have any shower parties. <laughs> I'm looking at him like... What? <laughs> shower yeah. parties as in parties in the shower? Well, here in Berlin, the nightlife is quite crazy. And I think it's probably been a good thing for the filming that the nightlife has been closed. Oh, because of Covid? Because of Covid. Like, there are nightclubs here in Berlin that open on a Thursday and close on a Monday. So you can go on Thursday evening, and you can leave Monday morning. I can think of nothing worse. Right, so the nightlife here in Berlin is, is arguably the best nightlife in the world. I see. So I think shower parties is just a casual Wednesday in, in Berlin. And did you um, stick to that rule? No, I had loads <laughs> of shower parties. <laughs> So it's been a brilliant weekend, Tom. We just call you, just call you before you go off to Barcelona to complete mm -hmm. the film. Um, it was great being on set yesterday. It's it's what all big films, aren't they? Yeah, I, I'm so impressed with the scale of this film. I remember and you said to me when you were playing with the script, I was in Dubai, and you said to me, Dad, it's going to be a really easy film to yeah, make. Yeah, I was very I was thinking, wrong. Tom, I've read the script. It doesn't seem to be easy at all. I don't know why I thought it was going to be easy. I don't. It's, it's, it seemed to me there's more action in this. I've done more action. I've done more wire work. I've done more fight scenes in this than I've done in all of my films put together. Okay. Like that daisy chain sequence. Mm. There that is. Beginning. I've done yeah. more of that, more wire work in that than both of the Spider-Man films put together. And how did it take to do that whole sequence? We were probably shooting that sequence on two units for four or five weeks. And how long would that be in the film? Probably be seven minutes, maybe, maybe less. Seven minutes. But it isn't just seven minutes of film, it's seven minutes of an incredibly complicated film. Yeah, it is by far. When I saw the previews, I was like, oh man, that is going to just be the hardest have, thing to film. Know that, yeah. Anyway, anyway, it's gone really well. I oh, I know you're very tired. I'm I know exhausted. you're working really hard. Well, well, when was your last day off? Our last proper day off was 14 days ago. And I was with you yesterday, and I know you get there early in the morning. And we left at I don't know 2:30 to go and see some of Berlin, mm. see the wall, what have you. And then you finished filming at 7:30. So when we were having dinner last night, Nikki and I at seven, you were still at work. And I'm still in the water. In crazy so water funny, tank. yesterday was our last day of shooting in Berlin and at the end of the day, typically like the crew who aren't coming to Barcelona will ask for pictures. It's like a sort of oh, yeah, common yeah, thing yeah, on the yeah. last day. Oh, I see. With but you? But, yeah. yeah. But because I'd been, you'd never asked during Is that production. Oh, it's a, like a sort of like unwritten rule. Yeah. Okay. And then on the last day that rule is lifted. Okay. And also, like, you want to take pictures with the crew yeah, because you, yeah. you get to know everyone. And that's so for well. their kids, right? For their kids or for them if they're fans. Yeah. Um, but because I'd been in the tank all day, you were shriveled like a prune. I was, yeah, shriveled like a prune, and my eyes were so bloodshot. Like, like I've I've never had such bloodshot eyes, and I basically look in all these pictures. I'm in like trackies, a hoodie, with bloodshot eyes. I look so stoned. You look like you're from Cherry. Yeah. <laughs> so all of these pictures are inevitably going to come out in 
a year or two when this film comes out, and everyone's going to say, wow, Tom Holland was really stoned at the rap party, which I wasn't. I have to say, I, um, we, we played golf this morning, which is a real pleasure played for me. played so well today. And when I saw you this morning, Tom, my parental instincts kicked in, and it was sheer, oh, Tom's had a big night. No, I didn't have a big night. No. I mean, we we drank, we had a few beers and stuff, and we hung out with the crew. But it looked like you'd been, it looked like you'd been at one of those shower parties. You'd been there all night. No, and come no, out. the shower parties tonight. So that was chlorine. Yeah, that was all chlorine. Okay, well that's good for me to hear as a dad because I was worried about him. Not worried, but I thought I, I want you to. You know, no, if I woke up looking like I did this morning I, from a night out, then I've got a problem. I looked at you and thought, oh my God, he looks <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Didn't smell of alcohol, but well, bloody hell, it looks really bad. Um, can we just tell my patrons how well I played? Yeah, Dad did play really well today, actually. It's the best I've ever seen you play. I'll tell you what. And then the back nine happened, and then it and was just turned. right back to normal. But that front nine, though, I'm thinking, I'll tell you what. Which I'm, means that you've got it in you. I'll tell you what, Tom. You could be... I'm late for a career change. What? What's your handicap? 14? 15. 15. I, I reckon well, you could so be a strong 13.5. <laughs> I'm just delighted to be playing on a lovely court. It was nice that we got to play, actually, because once we go to Spain and Atlanta... It was fantastic. We won't, I won't get to see you. No, that's why, that's why Nicky said, listen, Dom, off on a plane, because you don't want to see Tom till March. Hopefully you can come back at Christmas. But I, anyway, that was a good deal, so I came out and saw you. Delighted to do that. And talking of movies, um, this one was hard to make and really hard to make. I saw yeah. the scale of it yesterday. So, the devil all the time must have been a piece of piss. No, I wouldn't say it was a piece of piss. Well, compared to... I mean, you, you Physically, it wasn't nearly as demanding. Right. But then, again, the scenes in Uncharted, I'm never having to go to a really dark place in Uncharted. Right. All of the scenes are about finding the treasure and, and mm. exploring the world and, and me and Mark having banter with each other. Sure. Whereas on Devil All the Time, there's no room for levity this well, no, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying in the actual process of making the film. Oh, yeah, I mean, it yeah. must have been much easier. It right? was so much easier. Um, what, was the long, what was the length of that shoot? That was a long time. I think I was in Alabama for. Uh, is it actually filmed like in Alabama? Three months, yeah. We shot it in Birmingham, Alabama. So it wasn't filmed in that. Not no, in Ohio, no. It is was it Knockham still a place? Yeah. Real You've place. been there. I love that it's called Knockham Stiff. I know. Have you been there? No. No, but it and was... how far um, is Birmingham from Knockhamstead? Not a clue. Not a Scooby. I... It was helpful, though, being in Alabama because of the accent. Surrounded by the accent, surrounded by people in yeah. bar, bars and stuff. The Alabama accent is actually different to the Ohio accent. There are slight subtleties, and that's where Rick was really helpful, working with Rick throughout the process. Um, She's got the accent really down. Um, and I, I think you have to get the accent down because if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, and, yeah. and if someone watches a film, if your accent's off immediately, for me, as an audience member, I like switch off. I'm like, oh, you're not really, you don't sound right, and then I can't see past that or hear past that. Well, if you couldn't get the accent, I'd be, think, I'd be thinking as a punter, he can't do the accent. Why well, can't he get an actor from? Yeah, the southern totally. States. I said this to Samuel. They were chatting to Sam about the devil all the time, and I was saying how the Americans are kind of agreeable about the number of British people playing Americans yeah. in their movies. Because the, yeah. the Americans make most of the movies that we all watch. Yeah. You know, um, it's interesting though, to my understanding, English people have an easier time speaking with an American accent than the other way around. Because watching their films and, and stuff. Well, there's an element of that, but also we pronounce it, all of our words more than they do. Oh. You mean letters? Letters. So we use our tongues a lot more. Okay. So like our tongue theoretically, like if your tongue was stronger. a bicep, it would be stronger. So when, oh. we, when you do an American accent, you have to relax your mouth. But when an American is doing an English accent, they have to work harder. Oh. So sometimes if you're working with an American who's doing an English accent, you'll see them at the end of the day. And, and they look like they've been chewing toffee all day. Oh, is that right? So yeah, so... Because, you know, and also, like, we almost have a staccato way of speaking, like, we pronounce each word individually. But in and America, there's, there's you can kind of fluidly roll through the words and it yeah. doesn't have to stop. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, on the film, Tom, I watched it with some trepidation because I've seen some bad notices. Well, yeah. I wasn't worried, but I was. I always, want, I always want the film to be 
something I've enjoyed and I always want you to be good in a film. And I straight away, I said to Sam, didn't for a second think it was you in the film, which is good. Yeah, that's good. I was really pleased and I was never nervous. Sometimes in films I'm mm. worried. But I was saying to Sam, in Civil War, I was terrifying before you turned oh, up. Oh, I was so stressed. I was thinking, oh my God, I hope this is good. I was so but stressed. But in this movie, I didn't think about that at all. And I really loved the film. I am. Um, even, yeah. even though it was pretty, it was a tough subject. I thought that Antonio was my, yeah. did a great job. That was one thing again about the accent is because you get to a stage where you know I'm lucky enough to be in these Marvel movies. You become so recognisable. Your voice becomes so recognisable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately when you see me start talking, how do you start talking like this? And I'm from down south. People will go, "You don't sound like that. You're doing an accent." So part of it is mm -hmm. doing it so you have to do it to a point where Convincing. you trick them yeah, yeah. that they forget that they know what you sound like already. Right. Okay, and, and, and you must be pleased with the film. I'm so chuffed with the film, so chuffed with the film. The it's reaction. so nice for me to be in a film like that. You know, in the last five years I've been, and I love doing this, but doing family movies. You know, like Onward and Spies in Disguise and Spider-Man yeah, and yeah, Avengers, yeah. like okay. these kind of household films. Sure. And it's quite nice to do a film like Devil All the Time and like Cherry, um, which I got to kind of push myself in ways that I haven't had to with the Marvel movies or the animation movies I've been doing. It's very satisfying to have all the time because the people who you meet a punishment to entirely deserve it. Yeah, it's and good I love redemption. I love retribution. Yeah. I love one of my, if you said to me what's your favourite genre of movie? Revenge. I would say revenge because I love to see the bad guy get it. <coughs> and if you set up the bad guy well, like they did in that film, I think he did it really well. The, the bullies and mm. the, the, the deviants. I punched that kid in the face so hard. Which one? The one? The you know one? the kid who has the bag on his head? He didn't punch him in the face. Not on purpose. Was he a stuntman? No, he was just this character. <laughs> and I'm going, and I'm, and I'm obviously stacking it. Yeah, stacking it yeah. as well. Like if the camera's behind yeah, yeah, me yeah, here, I, yeah, you pull, I can you pull do back. it short and it won't look like I hit you. Yeah. So I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and, and Antonio was like, I need you to hit the bag because it looks so fake because the bag's not moving. Right. So I was trying to like move the bag off of his face and still hit why the bag. They, why can't they cut it and then they've got a, a sack in the bag or a, a, like a, a pumpkin in the bag? They so could do, but it's a small bag. budget film and you're, you're oh. up against it, you don't have time. So I'm That's doing it, doing it, doing it. And on the last one, I just, and this was totally an accident and he was really cool about it. I drilled him like right in the mouth. Oh, right. He just went, and that's the one that's in the film. It was um, very convincing, um, and as I say, it was very rewarding to see those guys get it. Well, the press for this film has been so stressful because it's obviously an art house film. Yeah. So all the journalists like to pretend like they're really clever and ask art house questions, like really arty farty questions. Yeah. So it always relates back to the book, and I, I didn't read the book, so. What was that thing happened to you in a junket? And they said, um, was it Wolf Hall? Yeah. <laughs> you said, ask me another question. They asked that? me, how, there was something to do with it, it was like, how has Peter Kuzminski, the director, made a parallel between politics then and politics today? And I just said, ask me another question. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, have you heard my story about Warfall? No. We went to Hampton Court, Nicky and I, Yeah. to see a talk. By, by Nikki's friend Tracy. Right. Okay, and Tracy's an eminent historian. She's giving a talk about the you know, the Tudors, okay, and I'm sitting there <laughs> you know, dropping off. And the lady next to me is a bit indignant and she said, um, you know, something I don't need up. She got chatting to me anyway and, and, and it got to the point that the questions I was asking, she said, Why are you even here? I said, Well I'm here because I I said because Nikki my wife she, she knows Tracy. And I said, um, my son <laughs> was, um, he was in Wolf Hall. And she went, oh, I love Wolf Hall. And I said, oh, I thought you might. And she said, who was he? And I was really, I thought, oh, God, who was he? <laughs> so I said, I think he was Gregory. Oh, I loved him. I loved Gregory. She said, what do you think of Wolf Hall? I went, I haven't watched. <laughs> I, didn't even, I haven't seen it either. Life's too short, I said. But uh, um, my friend David Early, you know, 
He, said, he loved it. He said to me the other day, he said, uh, we're playing golf, he said to me... He watched it again, didn't he? He, he? <laughs> <laughs> he said to me in lockdown, he said, we watched World Ball again. I said, bloody hell, Dave, you want to see Tiger King, mate? I'll tell you what, I really enjoyed that show. Um, what, Tiger King? No, 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 um, World Ball. Making it was really fun. Mark Rylance, right? And yeah, but Mark, Mark was lovely, really nice guy. But and me, and Tom and Joss... It was like it was basically like we went on tour around England. Like every two weeks, we oh, yeah, moved yeah, location yeah. to a different part of the country, we and we'd all get the Bath, train together. Yeah. You yeah. came up to see us in Bath, and it was really fun. We'd all, you know, you'd, I remember just drinking loads of those cans of Guinness, going to um, back to drinking. Then did you have red eyes the next day? <laughs> was it chlorine? <laughs> yeah, we were drinking chlorine. Where was that place called? Bradford and Avon, do you know, you know that house in Bradford and Avon, that beautiful house, you lost your ring, didn't you? I didn't lose my ring. Oh, well, the kid you gave the ring to? Yeah. Okay, so that house, that stunning property, guess who owns that? I, mean, I might have told you. The Not Fuller's good. family, the brewery. Oh, really? Mm. The Fuller's family, famous British or English brewer. No way. Back in the day, they owned all this property, you'd put in, in massive it. pubs in London, but they own that building. Love it. So, um, yeah. How's, um, so you, I heard you did a, um, a gig. Did you do a gig to a bunch of people in cars? Nightmare. Do you know what? Okay, so I, I did this gig. I I've remember. Done, I've done two gigs since March, <laughs> right? Two gigs since March. Okay, my my. This is my Patreon. It's my <laughs> is my go-to now, right? So I'm doing this gig in Newbury Racecourse. Okay, middle of the racecourse. Okay, you know, like Sandown, yeah. the golf course. So imagine the same thing. Massive space. Right. And they've got this stage, stage built, the comedy store. So the comedy store oh, it was the comedy store? Yeah, so they've got the comedy store backdrop, and um, there's four comics on, and I'm one of the comics. And, um, and everyone's in their car. They, so they drive in, and they park up, and there's two metres apart, not allowed to get out. And then they feed in the. Um, you have to the, tune in, do you? Yeah, they the tune radio in. tunes yeah, in. So they tune into your audio. So I'll do a line, I'll do my act, and it goes into their radio, into their car, okay? And you can hear nothing. Okay, and when I'm doing my gig, it's pouring me rain. No. All I can see, all I can see is... No. <laughs> so I'm doing the gig, it's about three in the car. <laughs> and I did a, my opening line was a line on COVID, okay? And because you can't hear any reaction, I don't know whether it's... So I've done the line, obviously, I don't know what I expected, I hear nothing. Because of course there's nothing to hear, because there's no cars. I think... Oh god, <laughs> that line's just stiffed. So I just panicked on could stage. They not have, like, I panicked. Could they not have like bibbed their horns? Yeah, what, or what happened is, is during the set they start to bib the horn. Okay, but you don't know whether they're bibbing the horn going. Because they're shit. You're telling them to shut up. Yeah, or, well, that's rubbish, mate. Well, that's good. You're just really good. polite. It so was like do, do, you're just do. sort of on stage going. You just sort of. Maybe what around. they should do is they should flash their lights. Well, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing ordered or structured about it. It's just a sort of, you know. I tell you, I would have, if I was there, I would have died laughing. It was a point of rain. I was sitting in my car, shivering. How many problem. cars were there? I reckon three hundred. Fuck off! Oh, three hundred cars. Yeah, I reckon three hundred cars, <laughs> and, and no laughs for twenty minutes. Oh and my then god, I did that a gig sounds on, brutal. I did a gig on Zoom. I did a gig the other day. Remember that gig we went to in um, in Tring, UK, and right? yeah. that recording. I did a gig there about two weeks ago, on a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock in the car park. Outdoors, in the car park, in that theatre. So, so that's the sum total of my live work since March. So that's why that I'm writing so these blogs and doing this stuff. So you, you've been working like a Trojan top, and I've yeah. just, that's why I played with golf this morning, mate, because I haven't been doing anything. I still beat you there. Yeah, but you wouldn't have done that. Back nine, I let you win, because I know you've, you'd like to win. So. Right, speaking of drinking, I think we should go and get a beer. Yeah, so look, thank you everybody, uh, it was good fun, I'm glad we caught up, caught up with Tom in Berlin, and uh, good luck in Barcelona mate, good luck in America, and we'll see you on the other side. See you later. Cheers.